Hello, good morning. It's nice to see a lot of familiar faces today. Thank you for coming out right early in the morning today after a lot of various parties last night. So, um, nice to meet you. My name is Proud, representing Zipmex today. For those of you who have not heard of Zipmex, we started off as a centralized cryptocurrency exchange. We've evolved to be a lot more than that, and I'll tell you all about it today. But first, um, let's talk about the elephant in the room. So um, I've been here for, let's say, the past 48 hours already. A lot of people are asking, oh, Zipmex, that's the company of the news, right? On the front pages of the news. I'm like, yeah, that's us. A lot of people are wondering, you know, what are you guys doing here? Aren't you a distressed crypto asset exchange, as kindly said by my friend at the back of the room just now? The truth is, yes. Um, we have been overextending our reach. We start off as a crypto exchange, but we have introduced interest-based products into one of our products. So our four pillars included you know, trading, buy, selling, buy and selling cryptocurrency, it including having a C5 product, which is a problem child at the moment. We had payment products and we have Web3 products. So what happened was we were exposed to some of the shall not be named players in um, both Singapore and in the US, causing a lot of confidence to be hitting rock bottom for us. Luckily, um, I'm not gonna lie, you know, it's been tough, but surely and slowly we have been recovering. It's been two months since we halted our withdrawals on our exchange, but thank you so much to our loyal customers. Some of them are in the crowd today, our confident investors and lots of partners we're actually on the path to getting back to business as usual. It's not been easy. Um, there's a lot of different lessons learned. I'm hoping to share a little bit of them with you today. But we're actually seeing a lot of renewed confidence from our user base. Um, we're seeing a lot of opportunities to build towards the future. You know, there's a little bit of a smiley face there, a light at the end of the tunnel. Our customers are also a lot more savvy than most. When we started in this business, a lot of them did not even know what crypto was. Now, since you know, the last bull run has happened, um, a lot of them are now really ready to graduate into Web3. So before I start talking about the future, let me share some of the lessons that I've learned during the past two months. One is, you know, controlling the narrative is almost impossible. The day we halted withdrawals, I had my phone on fire. <laughs> we had a lot of press reaching out to us. Um, we've had, you know, tons and tons of news about how we were owing people thousands and thousands of dollars. That is not true. The press is going to write what they're going to write. Um, sometimes there are people that are you know, going to say a lot of things that are not true. But people will change your opinion as long as you honor your commitments and they see that you're trying your best. What happened was, against the advice of actually our legal counsel, we went on a live. We've been doing a live every single week. We've been keeping everyone updated what's going on, what's happening. And we were actually the first exchange to be giving back some of the funds, to be opening some of our C5 products so that people can access some of the funds. Second lesson learned is nothing is more important than having an empathetic team. Dedicated and relentless, and of course, strong customer relationships. When we opened our exchange up in Thailand, we thought there was gonna be a bank run. Like, no way, no one's gonna you know, continue to stay with us or trust us. But the truth of the fact is, 75% of our AUM still remains today. And that's, that's amazing. Like, for us, we, we thought that you know, maybe this was something that we would take a lot longer to recover from. But I think because of, really, we have teams that were just calling our customers, explaining to them what is happening. We have emails um, going out to people every single day. The fact that we have such dedicated people still in our team that are 24-7 going through what it is to be a customer and also empathizing with them, I think that's extremely key. And the third lesson is accept that you don't know everything. We try to control the narrative, you know, we have this relentless team, but there's still some stuff that pop out of the blue. So in this, these kind of moments, we just have to make do what we have and do the best that we can. And when it's time to pivot, we decide that we will embrace it and we will commit it. And so let me tell you about what we're pivoting into. 
Southeast Asia, and Thailand in particular, is becoming a significant part of the crypto world. For example, Thailand is number one in terms of MIT users per capita. That's a fact that a lot of people actually miss out. Um, in Vietnam, you know, Vietnam is the number one in the world in terms of crypto users per capita. The Philippines is number one in the world for having the total amount of MetaMask users. These are extraordinary facts for three small countries that are in Southeast Asia. And with new money coming in from a rising middle class, 20% of Thailand's population now owns some sort of cryptocurrencies. People just can't get enough, and a new crypto ecosystem is emerging. That is why we believe that even within us, in the eye of the storm in Thailand, we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel, and we're moving to something very positive. You know, to feed the masses, countless NFT marketplaces are actually popping up across of Thailand. Um, yes, we have one too. It's called Zixel. The below are logos of all other collaborators and also partners and competitors. So from building metaverse bankings to NFT postage stamps, festival tickets, Thai businesses are flocking to Web3. If you are an investor or an entrepreneur in the crowd at the moment, be sure to take note. This is a country that you know, is often overlooked in terms of what is going on, but there are so many things that are happening. And um, Thailand's a nice place. I invite you all to come and collaborate with us on something. So what role can we play in all of this? Well, we're actually using the crypto winter to build towards the future. As I've told you, being you know, a CFI exchange was something that we thought was going to be commoditized sooner or later. And so we want to make sure that when Web3 premieres, when the next bull run comes, our customers will have front row seats. How? We want to be not an exchange, but actually a whole crypto ecosystem. And to do that effectively, we need to build a multitude of offerings. And so we start off with, like I said, launching our NFT platform called Zixel. After we are done with cleaning up the mess in the house, we are going to be launching Sixel Plus. This is where we are converging arts and internet culture as well. But for the launch of Sixel previously, we created Thailand's first digital event. Actually, this might be the first in Southeast Asia, to be a fact, and one of our partners' shopping malls. If any of you have been to the Par Siam Paragon in Thailand, we've turned the whole of the middle section into a crypto arcade. Now, a crypto arcade sounds very you know, confusing to a lot of people who are not in crypto previously, but an arcade is something that everyone has been before. And so putting in 90s nostalgia, making sure that everyone has a chance to just play a game, then they start realizing this is not too different from what they've done before. There are actually Web3 games or crypto games that could be fun. We've had a um, live performance by a band as well, both in reality at the shopping mall and in the metaverse. And I'm going to show you a little bit of a video in a, in, in a, um, a short period of time. Actually, the video is here. So this is a um, Zipmex building called Zixo that we built in the central land. As you can see here, you can go in, you can see a lot of our partners. Um, their NFTs are there. There's even a folder booth up there. Any of you who has been in the central land is probably a little bit familiar with how this looks. But for those who are not, it's, it's incredible how much you can do. So this was during you know, the peak of Omicron. And um, in February, it was very hard to gather anyone together at a period of time. Um, what we did was we worked with a few partners, including Grammy, which is one of the biggest entertainment companies in Thailand, to bring the Get to Nova band in real life and also playing here. We had a single Ready to Mingle event as part of the Valentine's weekend. We had a scavenger hunt, and we also had a DJ from Hong Kong. The event was attended by 20 to 30,000 people on Decentraland. Imagine packing that many people in during COVID. That's impossible, right? The things that we were doing, we, we knew this was going to be the start of something fantastic. We're also building a living and breathing community space inside our Bangkok headquarters. And we call it Zip Town. So if you've come to Bangkok, please do drop by and say hi to us at Zip Town. The goal is to merge real life crypto communities with digital ones and introduce this exciting new Web3 world to anyone who is interested. With a fully built stage bar, with a fully built stage, bar, cafe, gallery spaces, you know, featuring everything from metaverse TED, uh, TED style talks, NFT treasure hunts. 
this is how we are rebuilding ourselves and our communities. And this is how we are going to be showing a lot of digital fashion catwalks. The new space will soon be open to public. Events will be amazing. And of course, you guys are all invited. This is how we thought we are going to come back from you know, being in the depths of literally, are we going to survive the next day? To now seeing light at the end of the tunnel, we're getting um, an injection of capital very soon. And therefore, we realize that we have to look forward and step into the metaverse. We also have a launch pad. Um, this empowers customer with advanced access to new crypto projects. Um, you'll be able to you know, farm some of the um, crypto projects that you would like to have access to. Think you know, Web3 incubator, but also less of a profit motive, more of just trying to really bring out the great projects out. Customers that hold our native um, token will also be getting priority access to gaming guilds, early stage IDOs, and a curated metaverse events and airdrops. And as part of the mission to make Web3 mainstream, we are going to be collaborating with a lot more bands. If you guys are in the entertainment business, please do get in touch with us. Um, we are about to be launching a collaboration that we did with View, which is a streaming network. Um, they were in our office, um, actually filming in our office the other day. This is the start of having real life utility to NFTs. Soon you can vote for what is going to happen in the next episode of your favorite series. In terms of department stores, we are also collaborating with a lot of department stores. For example, um, we are partnering up with a grocery store to launch something extremely fun in November, um, just in time for Thanksgiving. Not only is mass adoption for just the private sector, but also in terms of the public sector, we're working with governments as well. And regulators also have to be on board. So as true advocates for the you know, Web3 aspects, we have been partnering up with the Asian Pacific Economic Cooperation Committee in Thailand. Um, Thailand is the host for this year in November. So a lot of these meetings have been happening. Um, this is the NFT from, from March when we first um, did, the, did the first round of meetings for them. And it's a souvenir from the Thai government to all the international delegates that are coming to visit the country for these meetings. That's kind of amazing, right? Just think about it. The government is giving out NFTs as a souvenir. And we're extremely proud to be a part of that. Pivoting our product also means we have to market a little bit differently. So what marketing language should we speak in this new Web3 world? I know this talk pertains to be you know, a lot about Zipmex, but I hope that a few of you would also get a few ideas of how you can also market in your own way. We feel that more than ever, we have a responsibility to educate ourselves and also our customers. So um, a little bit of a show, we just launched a new Web3 magazine. It's online, um, it's on Medium, it's on Mirror. And for special occasions such as Token 2049 and, and also different conferences, we're printing a physical copy. So um, you can actually go and get a copy at the back on the way out as well. Why, well, um, you know, those uh, gentlemen and lady is holding at the back. So here, take one, read it, and let us know what you think. Because this is, the, this is the only way we're gonna get mass adoption, by educating and by also getting people to be on board, reading something that you know, looks fun, rather than something that is a little bit boring, too technical, and hard to understand. We're also pushing production quality and marketing boundaries. It's about to start off. Start. I'm just gonna let this it's play for a little bit first. Buried. This is how we roll it, roll it, going on the ring. Let's take every beyond the barricade. Don't hesitate, never be afraid. You'll be alright. Step in so To make sure people actually watch, read, and engage with our materials, we make them look this good. 
And so the eye of the storm is not that bad. When you have a lot of creatives in the team that are churning out great production quality, it really helps to get the message across, and it really helps to get people to come in and just wonder, what are we doing? You know, what is a crypto revolution? Well, we realize that a revolution doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be something like the French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution that you guys were seeing in the video. It could be something that's a little bit more colorful and extremely fun. We have a lot of retail partners, um, but since crypto payments are on pause at the moment in Thailand, um, we're also thinking of building the, uh, bridging the gap by issuing crypto gift cards for Thailand. We already have a crypto debit card that is launched with Visa for Singapore. But this is Adam, our new retail ambassador. Come to Thailand and meet him, he's pretty great. I've been told that my time is running out, so I'll just rush it a little bit. Um, so as we settle in the new world, it's important for us to establish business objectives and also build a clear set of morales going forward. How our industry recovers depends not on what we've learned, but how we implement those lessons. You know, it, it's nice to say that, you know, we have been through all this, but actually there's a lot of lessons that we have internalized, and positivity is key. We need to build together towards the future and also get through this winter together. To help encourage new users and make informed information, empower them through knowledge. We've launched a range of 16 courses through seven different platforms. If you guys are in the education sector, let us know. We want to work with you. We also envision an industry that is truly ready to collaborate, to develop, and to promote each other. The responsibility is ours. It always was. And these latest events have made it extremely clear that we will need to define a clear code of conduct and at the end of the day, depend on each other. One of my mentors once said on stage, you know, you're only as strong as the industry that you are a part of because we have to build together and support each other in all this. So thank you so much for coming to my talk today. Um, thank you so much for, you know, being in the Web3 community and let's build this together. Thank you.